Okay, I got this video this morning from my uh, friend Dan Milgate, and he's also a researcher who works with me in Australia. Now, I want you to listen to this. This is about the double slit laser experiments. And I'm going to show you uh, what light really is, and it's not what they're saying. Now, these people make pointers, these quantum laser pointers, and it's got the dual slit. So, uh, QuantumLaserPointers.com It looks pretty nice. See this? They're shooting the laser. Quantum out. laser pointers brings you the infamous double slit experiment right in the palm of your hand. In 1801, English physicist Thomas Young performed this experiment to determine if light was a particle or a wave. A laser shines a coherent beam of light through a film disc containing two parallel slits. Light striking the wall behind the slits produces a classic interference pattern. This surprising result means light passes through the parallel slits not as particles but as waves. When the peaks of two waves overlap it creates a band of light. When the peak of one wave meets the valley of another, light is canceled out. Variations of this experiment spurred public debates between Albert Einstein and Niels Bohr on the true nature of reality. It's been called the granddaddy of all quantum weirdness. This convenient and affordable double slit laser was designed for personal enjoyment and education. Alright, what they just said is 100% wrong. And the reason it's wrong is light is a spinning circle and it is a particle. And here's what light is. This is exactly how light works. And I have plenty of evidence to back me up, so let's just start here that is the particle it spins through the slits there's two slits you see when this particle hits it's hitting in the center of those two so it it wraps itself around it comes back in here and it wraps itself around and comes back in here it's it, and some of it's getting thrown out to the outside and some of it will get thrown out to the outside here but the primarily it's going to be wrapping itself in and a little smidge goes out and this is wrapping in and the other side does the same thing it wraps in and wraps in so it collects primarily in the center it dissipates out because of the collection of the two of them in the same spot here and then the outside ones taper off it's just as simple as that all right this proves the real nature of light this is a single slit experiment with the um uh, I believe this, well, I know it was done with the uh, accelerators. And um, through a single slit, and you can see the light spinning. And you can see what will happen is through that one slit, and it's a venturi, so there's two cylinders here, and the light is going through the cylinder, which forces it to crush itself. And, and, and when it does, it goes into a high energy state, turns white. And at that point, it's, it's literally spinning itself, in behind in through there and then it, it loses it over the top and then it dips down in again and it does the same thing over here and it spins and you can see most of it's in the center and it flows its way out to the sides that's the nature of light the double slit experiment is is showing you that the particles are going through those two slits and they're collecting mostly in the middle because most of the particles are in the middle simple as that and this is the true nature of light and energy and, and, and what happens is it ejects an electrons, those are just free electrons, they've been so excited that they spin away from the sun uh, or stars or any source that excites them so chaotically in their outer orbitals there that they spin away and they spin off of the surface into the vacuum and when they do there's nothing for it to collide with because they're not negative particles some of them spin real fast and they're heavy some of them spin slower uh, I know but they, they spin slower and faster that's the frequency let's say they all travel at the same speed I don't think that's correct but let's say they do so they're all coming out of here at whatever it is 186,000 miles a second and but some of them co travel s slower in their spins and some of them real fast the faster they spin the harder they're going to hit something when they collide with it's called angular momentum it's just like spinning a bucket full of uh, a, a pound of water and when you spin it at 20 miles an hour it's going to hit somebody in the head it's going to weigh like a lot more than a pound that's what happens that's what energy is is how much weight this thing carries its mass only so the mass interacts 
and the speed of the mass it gives you the energy in this case that's all it is so it's e equals mass times speed all right so they come through the darkness of space nothing to collide with they hit into the molecular completeness of the earth and the gases and so forth and then they shower it with these radiating electrons because they they push the other electrons out of their orbits and they cascade down here in colors that's all and the plants eat them and, and uh, we eat the plants and the earth grows and we grow and they it bounces back from the moon at a much lower frequency and all you get is the reds and the high, uh, lower frequencies there so you can't get on the bright frequencies that is the nature of energy that is the nature of light that is the nature of the electron it flows from an energy source that has so excited it that it, 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 it escapes like a like a rocket escaping earth and, and now it's on its own. What does it do? It collides with something or it doesn't collide with something. If it doesn't collide with anything, it's out in outer space in a vacuum. And it's spinning and nothing happens. They can bounce around between each other and they don't create any energy problems because they're all, all net negatives. Once they interact with the space station, the atmosphere, the earth, or whatever it is, now you're bouncing electrons off it just like hitting a screen door which surrounds a nucleus. That's all it is. And you bounce off some of the electrons, some of them stay, they shake around, it creates heat, it creates light. That's the nature of energy. By the way, I'm not talking about rocket science here, spending a ton of money. We're using this for a kind of a laser, right there. A little construction laser. And then you, we're using like pins and, and uh, needles and things and nails and so forth to create the venturi. When you have two round things like this, and the light hits in between it at a certain distance in between uh, which is a very small gap it creates the effect of the light coming in and being forced to crush itself in here and and um, and we see these particles you see those particles there that's after the accelerator two waves of them come out like this very strange and and they're slowing down this accelerator is over here and then we have some other shots that are really astounding hold on one second all right this is just a single disc of light photographed in the air these pictures were taken by rodney warren i took a lot of them too but his his are the best so i'm using his and he did this he was in search of of, 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 of things that are in the dimension of space and i think he found them but he was so uh so attacked by the uh by uh, mainstream that he's um, he's sort of withdrawn but anyway let's go to this that is a, w a regular wave there's nothing here that interact it's just is coming through now it's interacting with air which does not um, have a big interaction now look at this now here look at this this was something he captured really really turned me on this is that wave only you see it's distorted and look at it it's pulled in here like a, a lightning beam and it hits that venturi so you have the two pins here when it hits that venturi it has nothing it can do but it, it compress when it does it has nothing it can do but accelerate when that has it has nothing it can do but atomize and it does it does exactly what it does in a carburetor in a car in the old cars, they used to have a carburetor which restricted where the air flowed through and then they let gas sip out of there. And it went through there in such an extreme velocity that it atomized the gas as it went past it and then you got combustion. Now, this is the same process. Light is liquid. It's a, it's a liquid. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously liquid. I have so many... And that's why they always show it as liquid. <laughs> anyway... When it hits here, it's, it's in chaos, and I have pictures of that too. And then it begins in quantum phases to come back down to its stable state. And that's what's happening here. And I have all kinds of, Rodney did thousands and thousands of pictures. And they were, um, and I'm going to still have them. Well, I have all the best ones. But anyway, um, let's go look a little deeper. All right, there's the light chaos at the slit. Right here is where the slit is. As it comes through the slit, it's, it's, it's just in absolute chaotic, uh, it's out of its own realm because it's accelerated past its, its normal speed. As it comes out of the, the light, it hits into the normal space 
and the normal density of the medium because there's not a lot of this restricted space and then it begins to come back down to its spinning discs and I'll show you what they look like coming at you all right this was actually the first shot I ever saw that Rodney did it was it, it absolutely blew me away I got a hold of him right away very graciously told me everything he was doing nice guy uh, and and you know he was maligned and we all are as soon as we show any of this stuff we're, we're not we're stepping on people's toes is what it is and they just don't want to have anything to do I, we just want to have people look at this and figure out what's going on but anyway these are what we, what I believe Rodney was in a different area this is I, I do the light research he did a, a dimensional sort of thing and didn't get involved in this so I uh, I discovered that light coming out of here was coming out in these these discs, these swishing discs, and there's a particle in these discs, and, and he has other shots that actually show the particle, and I'll show you that now. And you can see, see the density, see the color, see the different colors, and see the different densities, and the compactness of the spin, and the, uh, th those are different, different levels of energy. I think I showed the electrons, and well, we think they're, I think they're electrons, and um, we have them exactly identical looking in red, and. Uh, and um, green here, and you can see this. See this? I think that's a torus. You see that little donut thing, and the donut thing going this way. I believe that's a torus, and the torus is at the neck of the torus is what's called a choke, and the choke creates a restriction of where the potential gets restricted, and that creates a magnetic field that expands and opposes the incoming electricity that's flowing into the neck and it pushes it back 10 times the applied voltage so and if you're coming in at 10 volts poop, it pops it back at 100 volts so what does it do it comes back the other way and it hits the other restriction going in the other direction that pops it back so I believe this is the back and forth uh, it's, it's capacitive reactants and inductive reactants that's as much as I can tell you it goes deep somebody's got to look into this but I believe this is what you're seeing as a part of it all right, this is about the best shot I can give you to show you what these electrons come out shooting out as. You see this trail here? Zzzz. That indicates it's a right-hand spin because the particle is drifting to the left. Now, you see how they expanded here and they start contracting, contracting, contracting. This is the accelerator is at the bottom, and these are coming out in their own separate electron tubes is what I'm going to call them. Now this is one here 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 they're all the same thing except this one is highly energized because some of them come out highly energized some of them won't come out so highly energized and that's what we see here and they all compact though they all start to compact as they go back into the um, unrestricted medium which is a, a different density because they're not crushed anymore and they're not accelerated anymore all right so, so sum it up um, light is a particle, it is not a wave. If you looked at it from the side, it would be a wave. But if you look at what is actually traveling through space, you see this? It is a wave. If you looked at it from the side, that's a wave. See it? Zip, 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 up, up. But if you look at the front, the particle is a particle. It's not a wave. By the way, Rodney said that he could hear sizzling when this, when he was hitting the slot, at, uh, the slits at certain times. So it's something very, very high frequency stuff going on there. And I think that acceleration could be used to accelerate how a, um, a solar collector receives electrons because right now it's just hitting it with the speed of the sun. And I think using this would, would force them in there at a very much high, higher potential. But that's just a guess. And I do have a video on there that's asking people to try to look into that. I called all kinds of solar panel places. They're not interested in even talking to me. So that's what happens. It's you're on your own or it just had doesn't happen. But anyway, that's the case there. Science theory challenge is where you should go. And I also have uh, mud fossils which is about the uh, actual earth which is totally misunderstood as well. There's new species. Now this is mud fossils original research group. And then I also have something that is for the soul which is mud fossil revelations. Okay, so that's the case. And um, I'm sorry Albert Einstein wasn't right. He just wasn't right. 
and E equals MC squared is, is very wrong because if as Albert said if light has no mass which he's wrong about that but if it did have no mass it would have no energy from his own equation and C squared is meaningless because it's always the same speed it's we might as well say it times two so that's the story and uh, other schools are teaching the wrong thing so come to Mud Fossil University on YouTube as well which is a very 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 um, highly informed place where you can learn anything you want to learn for free and nobody will hold you accountable for anything and it's all very 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 interesting stuff and there are loads of it and it's all things that are factual and backed up by actual evidence and showing things that cannot be denied and creation meaningful. and it shows about creation so I think it's time to look into that as a fact and dead dust to life never did ring true for me. Alright, before I get out of this thing, I'm going to just explain to you. This is, I do mud fossils normally, and I was forced to go into every bit of science to prove what I was saying, which I'm saying is absolutely no question, it's true. This is DNA tested it, using ancient DNA techniques. Look at that. That fabric, and you ask any anatomist, they, they're going to tell you that is the pattern of a lung. And this is a, a left lung. That's the impression of the heart right there. That is... Uh, there's a little flap, I think they call it the fascia tongue. This is what they call a pleura that coats it. And, and that's been DNA tested. It's been CAT scan, no question what it is. This has been DNA tested, 100% human as well. This is a fingertip of a giant. There's the, um, that's the vein side, that's the artery. The artery blows out through the holes because there's no restriction. See, that's all where the, the holes are. The, the vein side does not blow out. The, hole, the holes are there, but they remain plugged because the vein side has uh, valves. That black stain is the stain of the bone which is internally in there and any anatomist can tell you that that is the stain of what's called a distal phalange which is the tip of your finger right at the very 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 end. DNA test is 100% human DNA giant. This was also found with that tip and it was not in an eroded area. This has been CAT scanned. This is 100% human. And it, it wasn't DNA tested, but it's been verified by an anatomist. It's 100% human in, you know, uh, anatomy. It's, a, it's got, uh, anyway, you've got to go look up. Uh, I have all these uh, videos. I have the DNA test, three DNA tests, seven CAT scans. So it's not, there's nothing here that's uh, not understood. Just needs to be looked at, and and um, and that is why I got into all this other stuff. So come to Mud Fossils and uh, Mud Fossil University on YouTube. That's where you're really going to find out the truth about things, and you will be surprised. <laughs>